are listening to Fountain of Thought with your hosts, Dennis Fountain and Sonny Rain. One small step for man, one giant leap for America. This show contains adult themes and language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to the Fountain of Thought podcast, broadcasting from the Erickson Memorial Studios. This is the podcast where we talk about anything and everything. Leave us a voicemail on our listener line at 413-612-8037. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at TalkFOT, or visit our website at fountainofthought.com. Good day, Dennis. How are you today? Good day, Sonny. I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. You know what today is? Today is Friday. <laughs> today is unlucky Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Yes. Welcome yes, my son. to the Fountain of Thought segment, where your all-omnipotent host, Dennis Fountain, ponders life events. What am I going to ponder today? I'd like you to sort out and kind of make sense of all this Weinstein crap that's going on. Sure. What do you want me to sort out for you? Well, well, Guy's a perv. Yeah, but what, 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 all of a sudden? No, it's been happening for well, years. That's what I'm saying. Yes. But all of a sudden. Well, no. What happens is all of a sudden lawsuits started getting filed. That's what happened. But uh, apparently for years he's been doing this. It's documented for years. They've got him on audio tape. They've got him on videotape. Even all the way back to Angelina Jolie when she was first starting out says that he groped her and all kinds of accusations are out there flying around and uh, it's been a cover up. The Hollywood elite have decided to brush it under the rug and not say anything because, you know, he's uh, he's he's a good producer and makes good movies. And well, yeah, well, they don't want to ruffle their career. Well, well, a they don't want to ruffle his career. You're right, because apparently he's done it to um, allegedly. And done it to like the craft service personnel, the secretaries, the I mean, just, it's not just the actresses. He's pretty much done it to everyone. Um, but as far as the actresses go, they didn't want to say anything because they didn't want to ruin their career. Exactly. They're they're starting out and they're getting you know, they didn't want to get blackballed in Hollywood. As yeah, it kind of goes back to the old uh, casting couch. Exactly. Yeah. And as far as the politicians go, they didn't want to say anything because he was donating millions and millions of dollars to the Clintons and to the Obamas. They're his best friend. And also, I would have to say that it has something to do with Bill Cosby, too. All of a sudden, everybody saw a chance to make some moolah. Well, I don't know what initially caused them to, to come out, but it could be maybe that, you know, they figured, you know, it might be time. The other thing that might be possible is now that because uh, Trump's in office and the Democrats aren't doing so well, maybe they decided they could get some headway I, I don't know i don't know what the motivation behind the actual outcoming but now it's it's all over the place well, i'll tell you i was watching the talk the other day and Sharon, i'm sorry you don't like that show that's the most leftist oh, <laughs> i scream at that show that in the, the view the view's worse no the view is definitely worse but, but the oh. talk is just i just like the, the the girls that are on there they're just the shit that they come out with Sharon Osbourne went off on Weinstein. You should have heard the shit she was yeah. saying. I couldn't believe it, saying how ugly he was. And well, he is. It, it was sweaty and ugly and smelly. Yeah, and who's <laughs> there's a quote from? Is it Angelina Jolie? There's a there's a quote from. Oh, uh, it's Kate Beckinsale. Um, apparently she went to his house for something. She was first starting out. She hadn't had any really acting jobs. She went to his house and he showed up in a silk robe that was open. Yeah. And she thought the exact same thing. And her quote was something to the effect about, you know, what does this old, ugly, fat guy think that uh, I'm interested in him? You know, this must be something weird going on. And she just attributed it to him being old and weird, not that he's a sexual pervert, you know. But Well, anyway, not, a little sidebar on that. They, as they were covering that story, they also covered a story about Terry Crews. Yeah, and apparently Terry Crews was at some point, he was at some party, and some guy came up and grabbed him by his junk. Now I asked Terry, you, Cru- I wouldn't want to grab Terry Crews. <laughs> Two hundred and sixty pound, no, massive muscle. No, you got some serious sized balls to a, go up there and grab a, his package. A guy or a girl? It was a guy. He walked I, up and grabbed him right by no, his package. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and then they qu- quoted Terry. He said, "Well, you know, no. my first impulse was to beat him, you know, beat him into the ground." Yeah. He says, "But then what would I be? I'd be this two hundred and sixty pound black man who just beat the living crap out of you know some, some you know." Was he white? 
I'm going to assume, I'm assuming he, he was because of the way he said it, but he didn't actually come out and say that. Yeah. But, um, I just, but just when I heard that story, I'm like, how could you even have that much, that much bravery? It was, <laughs> and it, it was a strange, it was so, I, somebody who just, know? no, it was someone that's, in the party. Yeah, and I guess that's, they just, maybe he was high or something because I don't listen to do it uh, on anyone. Normally you got to have some guts, but in order for Terry, no, I'd, I'd be afraid he's going to swap me like a fly. Well, that well, I'm saying the guy must've been on drugs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But something must've must 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 shocked the hell out of him. Yeah. Anyway, my second thing is, you know, every day it's Donald Trump this, Donald Trump that, Donald Trump this, this picture, this tweet, this tweet, this tweet. I have a theory. Do you think maybe this is actually this whole thing has been staged from the beginning to be the number one ultimate reality, reality show? Because <laughs> it's not in the feel like that. I mean, just every nah. single, it's every single day. It's so stupid. I mean, when are we going to start going into the bathroom and checking his stool in the morning and find out if we can, you know, have a few comments about that? I mean, it's... it's RateMyPoo.com? You know, really, though. It's just, it's out of control. Well, yeah. Why don't, it's, why don't everybody just it's because listen. they lost. Just back off and let him do his job. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Ugh. And here's the thing. The reason why that's not going to happen is because they have nothing concrete to say against him, like pulling out of NAFTA, pulling out of the, um, I mean, uh, pulling out of TPP, pulling out of uh, uh, the Paris Accords, uh, p- pulling out of all, uh, uh, of, you know, the the pipeline that he signed. Everything that he's done, there's been no major repercussions over it. It's gone over very well. Pulling so, out, that doesn't sound manly to me. Yeah, I say yes. leave it in there and get the job done. Yeah, well, <laughs> so he's, they don't have any, they, you know, there's no substance that they can knock him for. Because everything that he's done has been okay. I mean, it, it, so all they can knock him for is, you know, uh, his his tweets and what he says and his character. Okay, and, yeah, bottom, and, bottom personal line. Personal things, personal things. Bottom line. Is Donald Trump an arrogant prick? Yes. Well, yeah, we all know oh, that. Always has been. And that's one of the reasons why we voted for him. Is he outspoken? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Does he, does he hold his tongue? Absolutely no, not. No. He says what's on his yeah. mind. Okay. Yeah. Hey. That's the reason exactly why. That's why I voted for him. One of the reasons. That's the but, reason yeah. why the man is in office yeah. because everybody wanted to see something different. They wanted yeah. to see a businessman run the right. country right. rather than a kiss ass politician right. with an ear to ear smile reading these and elegant speeches Obama. that are prepared. Right. You know, and we went from one extreme to another. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. It's just it's like a bunch of little kids in the play. They're all in a sandbox and nobody's getting Somebody along. Somebody took their toys. Yeah. And they want their toys. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. I, I, I you know, it's not it's not going to change. Maybe in uh, 3 years it will, but we'll see what happens. If he gets voted out, I guarantee it's not going to be boring. No, 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 definitely not going to be boring, but you know, they I, I think the Democrats have I hope have seen the error of their ways um, when it comes to the election and, and decide that, you know, they might actually have to campaign, you know, to, to work at this. But uh, again, uh, Trump still has three years to get some some stuff on the books and to make things make a difference. And uh, end of these three years could come up. And when it's time for a reelection, uh, he may be doing such a good job that he'll win again. And you know what? He might just decide. I don't feel like doing four years it is enough. It's possible. You know, I accomplished another goal in my life. I want to move on to something he, else. You know, if you're right, if he does what he said he was going to do, like if the wall's built and and uh, when he's working on uh, health care, you know, if all of these things that he that he campaigned on, he succeeded. You're right. He very may well say, you know what, four years is enough. I did what I said to do. And I'm moving on because you know he'll be up there in age too. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, what are we talking about today? So uh, we were tied going into uh, this past week in the football picks. Oh, we're going to do picks first? Okay. Yeah, let's do picks first. And uh, we were tied at 37, and uh, I had eight wins this week, and you had seven. So once again, I have taken the lead, which I have had since its inception. I've either had the lead or tied, so I'm better than you. Oh, that's, an un- that's a given. You're always better than me. I'm better than you. All right, so yesterday's game was the Panthers and the Eagles. I took the Panthers and a loss. How about you? Meow. <laughs> Wait a minute. Last time I did that, you yelled at me and said, that's not how a Panthers actually was a, uh, the um, Jaguars. But 
That's not how a panther sounds. Well, how's a panther sound? I don't know. You did it. You did. I don't know. You did some. No, that's a lion. Panthers are different. But so we both took losses. Yep. All okay, right, I'm Sh- still winning. <coughs> Chicago against the Ravens. I took Chicago. I think the Bears are going to come in and just claw the feathers right out of those Ravens. I'm taking the Ravens at home. There's a loss. Green Bay and Minnesota. Went for Green Bay. I took Green Bay as well. Did you? <laughs> yes. Good, good. All right. Going for the pack. Uh, Miami and the Falcons. I took the feathery ones. Uh, me too. Falcons at home. That's a hard one. San Fran and Washington. I also took the other feathery ones, but they're just, you know, having them on their headdress, you know. And I took the Washington. Indigenous people. I took the indigenous people one. I took the Washington Redskins myself. All right. Okay. Cleveland Browns are taking a trip down to Texas to meet the Houston Texans. I took the Steers. Sounds like a lot of bull to me. I took the Steers. Lions going down to meet the Saints. I went for the Saints. I'm taking the da 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 Detroit Lions. Really? Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's something different. Oh, I I know who you picked for this one. Uh, Patriots going into New York to face the Jets. You picked the Jets. I picked the Jets. No, I did not. Pig's <laughs> ass. I'd rather That'd be a good game. I'd rather slit my throat. <laughs> Tampa Bay is going to visit Arizona in the desert. Yeah, I took the Bucks. I took the Bucks as well. All right. And the Rams are going into Jacksonville. I took the other cat. I did too, you know, but that's going to be a that's a long shot for both of us because the Rams so? are playing some good yeah, football. Yeah. But I don't know, Jaguars are playing pretty decent and it's home, so give it a shot. Okay. Pittsburgh going into Kansas City. Oh, wah, 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 oh, wah, 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 wah. My brain was working. I should have gone with that, but it wasn't. I went with my heart. I'd rather Pittsburgh take them out because they're getting a little too carried away with wins. <laughs> really? You think so? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, the Bolts against the Raiders. I took the Raiders. I took the Bolts. Although I just found out that Derek Carr might be coming back this weekend. Yeah, well. That would have altered my pick, but. Too late now. So you went with uh, I went with the Chargers. You went with Dupont's team. Although now he's in Texas, he might no, be. He no, might. He no. might have switched. That's not his, his team. Is the New Orleans Saints? That's his team. Oh yes. As soon as he moved to Texas, he changed. Oh, oh. yes. Okay. Don't you know? The, the, don't you know the I'm lifestyle not of the elite? Following it? No, I wasn't. Jeez. Wow. John, who'd you pick? Giants against the Broncos at home. I took Denver. Yeah, me too. Mile high, definitely. Okay, how about the Colts against Tennessee on Monday Night Football? I took the Titans. I took the Colts. Went with the Titans, the big old Tennessee Titans. How about the Buffalo Bills against the Bengals? <laughs> I took them both. And how about Dallas versus the Seahawks? I took neither. I think all four of them are going to end in a tie of zero. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. There's our picks, folks. We'll All see right. who's winning next week. It's It'll be me, of course. You know what you are? What am I? Tip mouse. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Oh, I want that. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Oh, I want that sound, but you got to give me that sound. Okay. I love that commercial. That dilly so- dilly. Every time I hear it for like hours afterwards, I'm going dilly dilly. Oh, me too. It's awful. Dilly dilly. It sticks in your head. Yeah. Dilly dilly. Take them to the pit of despair. Dilly dilly. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're going to talk about the NFL today. Well, uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is uh, we had a previous uh, episode where we talked about um, the well, national well, anthem. Well, before you get right into that, I just I saw a blurb the other day, and I almost I almost fainted. Peyton Manning was in an interview and said Tom Brady is a great quarterback. Well, that doesn't surprise me. He won't say he's the best, but yeah, he'll say he's a great quarterback. But, but I thought that was pretty good. Eh. What's, you know? he, what's he going to say? He's a bad quarterback. He's a no, fair I'm quarterback? Sorry. I'm sorry. His quote was, Tom Brady is great. That's what he said. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty cool of him to say. It was all right of him to say. Oh, come on. You, gotta, you can't hate the guy now that he's out of football. Yes, I can. That new stupid commercial he's got with what he's singing with, what's his name? He's playing That's the guitar. Funny. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were we're almost there. Nationwide, is we're, on we're my all side. we're almost there. Yeah, no, <laughs> don't I? I no, no. Boy, you were, I, you were so disagreeable I, today. I don't like any. I I just don't like the man. It's you know not necessarily his um, uh, uh, 
football prowess, which, uh, listen, you can't deny he's he is or was a great quarterback. You can't deny that. He was good. But the fact of the matter is, is that as a person, I can't stand him. I, I He's arrogant. He's just – and he comes across like this dumb hick not trying to be arrogant, but I can see right through it. I don't, I don't like it. Don't like him. How do you think he feels about you? Uh, he doesn't know me. You don't know that. Um, that's true. I don't. He might be listening right now. All right. He saying, really? Saying, Fountain, you fat bastard. Really? <laughs> Why don't you call our listener line, please, at 413-612-8037. We would love to have you uh, call yeah, come in, on, Peyton. Peyton. Call in. Yeah, call in. And, Tell him. Give him your opinion yeah. of him. Tell me what you really think of me. Okay, right. go ahead. So, um, you know, we talked about the national anthem, and, and then every week there's this, I don't know what you want to call it, show that goes on uh, for the football opening the national anthem. Some kneel, some stand, some hold arms, some hold shoulders, some skip to my loo, my darling. It's just, it's become ridiculous. And all along, no one's, well, now it's come out, but beforehand, it, no one ever said this. It's in their playbook, all right? Their operations manual says, and I'm quoting, the national anthem must be played prior to every NFL game, and all players must be on the sideline for the national anthem. During the national anthem, players on the field and bench area should stand at attention, face the flag, hold helmets in their left hand, and refrain from talking. The home team should ensure that the American flag is in good condition. It should be pointed out to players and coaches that we continue to be judged by the public in this area of respect for the flag and our country. Failure to be on the field by the start of the national anthem may result in discipline such as fine suspensions and or forfeiture of draft choices for violations of the above, including first offenses. So that's always been in the books, and no one has said boo about it all of this time. So I, I, this should have been nipped in the bud, and I hate to say it, you know, because I don't want this to be about Trump, but Trump's right. They should be fired for what they're doing. They're not following the rules. And Jerry Jones, who's not everyone's favorite owner, had this to say, and I'm again, I'm quoting. If there is anything disrespecting the flag, then we will not play, period. We're going to respect the flag, and I'm going to create the perception of it. We cannot in any way give the implication that we tolerate disrespecting the flag. We know that there is a serious debate in this country about those issues, but there is no question in my mind that the NFL and the Dallas Cowboys are going to stand up for the flag. But let me be real, real clear. The thing that the National Football League needs to do and the Dallas Cowboys are going to do is stand for the flag. We're going to do that if the rules that are on the book, in my opinion, and that's exactly what he said. I didn't correct it, but the, the verbiage was the way he said. And that's Jerry Jones. So many of us are not huge Jerry Jones fans, but he's right. He's absolutely right. He's right. You know, so I don't understand what the big hubbub is. I, you, you can't protest during the national anthem. Can't be done. Do you have a right as an American citizen? Yes, but not while you're working. And that's what we said before on the podcast. These guys are at work, and they can't do it at work. Most people can't protest while they'll work, and this is right in their operations manual. Can't do it, guys. So, Can you walk up to the counter as a, as a clerk and say to the customer, can I take your order? And while they're ordering, pull out a cigarette out of your pocket, put it in your thing, and light it up and start smoking right there. And, you, and tell them uh, just a I'm minute. Protesting? No, just just a minute. I'm 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 uh, having a smoke break. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> why? Because it's a rule. You can't smoke. Right. Right. You're an employee. So, you got to follow the rules. So that's just one little aspect. But the but, you know I but to... this is the thing that gets my hair across my ass. The bottom line is this. Okay, the flag is a representation of the United States of America. The land that they're standing on, the land that they're earning money in, the land that they're living in, and the land that gives them the rights and yeah. freedoms that a lot of countries around the world do not have. And that is not something that you protest. You don't protest the, the symbol of the country. You protest issues. Well, they're doing it wrong. They're they're say they're well. Alan Kaepernick isn't even around anymore, and and it's the protest has gone beyond the scope of what it was originally intended for. Well, Kaepernick, I heard, you was know. traded to the. Um, well, he says he's coming back, and he says he will stand. So, <laughs> I don't. 
I don't know. That's not what I heard. I heard he said he was going to stay. I heard yeah. he was traded to ISIS for a player to, for a player to be named <laughs> later. Uh, but speaking of salaries, I wanted to touch upon that too. Is so, this a list? No, it's not a list. Because if it's a list, I'm like, we'll take a leak. No, it's not a list. Okay. So how much do um to sports players make? How much do the people in the NFL make? Too much money. How much? How much is the average the average player? I thought I did not research it, and I had mentioned in a previous episode that I thought it was you know. Even the low ball guys, you know, made a couple hundred thousand. But some of these low ball guys that are drafted, they get some serious offer sheets to sign. Yeah. So, what do you think the average salary is? I don't know, couple, two, three million. One point nine million. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they are the lowest, which I did not know. I thought they would be amongst the highest. Do you know what the highest is? What sport pay, pays the most, on average? Baseball. No. NBA. No shit. Yep. Yeah, five point one five million per player. Uh, Major League Baseball is 3.2, followed by hockey, 2.4, and then the NFL is last with the 1.9. Yeah, but the biggest piggish salaries end up in the in the baseball, I think. Could be. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't research who, well, when you who start makes looking, the most. You but, start looking back and see Alex Rodriguez signing for $300 million over. Well, Come on. That brings me to what's America's favorite pastime? You know, it used to be it used baseball. to be baseball, Everyone's but now baseball. it's questionable. What do you think? What do you think is? I think football because it's once you a week commitment. Think it's football. I think football plays out much better. I like the once a week thing. I don't like having so many games as baseball does. That's what baseball did. It ruined it for yeah. itself because they made it so long. Yeah. That you're just you know so tired of it. Right. I mean, here it is October. The weather's getting cold, and it's still going. Right. And in in football. There is an emphasis, so much emphasis on each game because each game is so important to win. You really don't want to lose even one game. It's exactly. very, very important. So uh, the NFL has, and it, this depends upon how you want to look at the figures. If you look at the average attendance, NFL is number one because they have the average attendance of 69,487 people per game. That's because the NFL developed into a very big social gathering. It's not just going oh, yeah. to the game. Yeah, tailgating. Ta- the tail- yeah. Have you ever you been to a Patriots game? Yeah. 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 Unbelievable. I was so impressed. I was more impressed by the parking lot and what was going on tailgating. Half how, those people don't even go inside. And f- how friendly these people are. Yeah. They're out there with their barbecues. They've got 40-inch TV screens yeah. up in the back of their truck. They yeah. just parked there. And, hey, well, you want a hot dog? You yeah. want some so, Hey, help yourself. You know, I was just impressed. I yeah. was like, "This is it's like one big it's giant an event fam. within an event." Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and and they emphasize this even at home. You know, yep. go to your local store right now. All fall, it's going to say game day wings on sale, yeah. three twenty nine a pound. You got to buy five pounds worth yeah. of wings. Invite Tailgate, everybody. Yeah, 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 invite everybody over to watch yeah. the game on Sunday and enjoy some wings and some. You know, yeah. and it's that's to me is more of an American pastime now than have to commit to, okay, we won Tuesday. How many more games we got? Three more with this team? Okay. Oh, a day off. Thank God. Oh, well, now we got four against it. It's, it's tedious and it's boring. And the pitchers bore the shit out of you because they have to sit there with their rituals of well, walking around. they tried around. to speed that up. Yeah, but, but they, it, yeah. they failed. Yeah. It, it's still so damn long. Yeah, so NFL... Um, and I'm going to round up 70,000 people, you know, average. However, their attendance is is um, it's the dipped since fourth we- on the list. The total attendance is just about 17 million. So now if we look at total attendance, this is for a year. Uh, the baseball has it by leaps and bounds. They have 72, almost 73 million in attendance. But that's for the year. Well, that's 163 year. games. No, that's 2,419 games. Well, yeah, if but you I mean, count everybody. 163 times 30 yeah. teams. Yes, that's my point. But I'm saying yeah. when you got that kind of uh, right. That when you play that many games, yeah. NFL only has 256. And I, and to this day, I'm still trying to figure out. How does the NFL pay these salaries when they only have two preseason games and eight home games? Oh, I'll I mean, tell you. I'll tell you how their field is used only ten times. Well, it's used for other things. Well, as that well. I know it's that just, other thing, other events, college sports, right. Revolution shares, yeah. Patriot. I, yeah. I get that. The concerts, understandable. Yeah. But I'm saying, baseball has at least eighty something odd games to sell tickets to, yeah. as opposed to ten. Well, it's commercials. They it's pay contracts. a lot. They pay a lot more for yes. football because when we're talking about this, talking about America's pastime. All right, so we talk about attendance, and 
actual people going to the stadium. And so NFL has more people going to the stadium than Major League Baseball. The, it, I, I think NFL is number one. So it's on my list. I put it as number one, and I put Major League Baseball as number two. Even though they have more total attendance, they have less at their game. They average about 30,000 people per game. All right, And then you look at um, – you know what's third on the list, which shocked me, is soccer. Really? Soccer is third in attendance, yeah. 21,000 per game. Uh, the NBA is 17, and the NHL is 17. And uh, the NBA and the NHL, they play uh, 1,230 games, and uh, Major League Soccer only plays 340. So they're similar to the NFL. But what I'm getting at is that attendance-wise, I think they do more. And now we turn to the lucrative part, television. More people watch football than they watch baseball. Okay, So ratings are higher for football than they are for baseball. And all the important commercials, what they make. So... Super Bowl, and this is last year, it goes up every year. They take in $4.2 million for every 30 seconds. Holy shit. $4.2 million for every 30 seconds, and that is leaps and bounds above anything else. So the next highest uh, amount of money you can get for a commercial? Football. The AFC and NFC Championship game, $1.78 million per 30 seconds. To buy a commercial? Yep. $1.8 million. Yeah, during the AFC NFC Championship game. That's a bargain. I want I want my... Yeah, my really? yeah I'm going to buy one this yeah. year. Why not? Yeah. So uh, the next on the list is the NCAA Division Basketball Championship, 1.49. College Football Champion, $720,000. Sunday Night Football, $665,000 per 30 seconds. Major League All-Star Game is $520,000. The NBA is, I'm sorry, 590000 The NBA is 520000 The World Series is only 430000 And when you get down to regular games, they range anywhere from 10000 up to 100000 Wow. So all the money is for football because that's what people watch. So in my opinion, America's pastime is no longer baseball. It's football. Well, baseball will be America's pastime for history and legacy. But yeah. nobody's ever going to come forward and say it's been replaced. You know, the, but we, they're so but, different sports, but, though. But we know it. You know, I would. There is to me. There's. It's so different. I, I would rather sit in my backyard and watch lay, water polo. I, I know. <laughs> lay I know. in my hammock and listen to a Red Sox game. Then, then almost anything. That's just summer to me. That's that's relaxing. That's a that's a great. That's a great thing. Football? I'm revved up. I'm excited. I'm not usually relaxed for a football game. No. no. I mean, you, I'm like. You're on the edge of your yeah. seat. And let's, <laughs> yeah. Let's, you know, anybody comes in the room and right. interrupts yeah. you, I'm going to punch you. Exactly. Yeah. So oh. it's, they're too, they're so completely different. But again, uh, football is, is, is just it. Football is, is, my, football is my favorite sport. Mine as well. And baseball, here's some advice. Okay. Make April 1st. Spring training. Use the month of April for spring training. April's still a shitty month. Rain, snow, you don't know what you're going to get. Start the season May 1st and end it at the end of August. That's it. What Short happened May. to Mr. October? Screw Mr. October. <laughs> That'll sure. never happen, though. But they because should. you know why? Because now you're going to take away revenue. They need those extra games now to pay for things. And then get They rid- milk it. And they need to take away this other rule of you got to play your division 17 games per team yeah. for this rivalry. Get rid of all that shit. Just go back to the basics like it used to be and just make baseball fun. It's supposed to be a fun family sport. Not a, not a, I don't know what it is now. It's, well, just, it's just... Like everything else, it's become elitist. I mean, look how much money... and I. Uh, occasionally I will buy Red Sox tickets that very seldom happens. Usually it's when someone gives them to me because it costs so much money to go see a Red Sox game. You got to pay for the tickets. And then we talked about it last episode, you know, $5 for a hot chocolate that is like eight ounces. And the food is so expensive. And then the gas to get there well, and the thank, parking. Thank and, God you don't drink you know, because what is it? $15 oh, for a beer? I don't beer? know what it is. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. But it's it's just so expensive to attend these things. You can't you can't take a family anymore. That's why I like minor league. Minor league is we've gone over to the Blue Sox several times, and it's such a different atmosphere. 
I like it. The kids can go up and talk to the players. The players sign the balls. They sign autographs. They talk to the kids. It's not like that. It's not like that in the majors anymore. You know, you go well, there early. Those are the guys in Holyoke, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you know, you go there early to watch them take the field, and everyone hangs out. I've done this all, every time I go. I like to go early. You know, and they don't they don't participate with the, the spectators anymore. You know, it's they get paid too much money. They'll come out, they'll do their stretches, and then they're gone. You know, not every player. Now, I'm not going to say every player, but most of them. It's just, it's it's become, it's too elitist. They're too, you're right, it's not family friendly. It's not fun anymore. It's, it's, it's I, I know, I know this show is supposed to be about football, but it's just, we've well, just. It doesn't have to be we, about football, we, per se. But. We've tapped into a vein here. There's a lot of things about it that, that soured it for me. Number one, I'm a little tired of these starting pitchers going out doing an excellent job, and as they're walking off the mound, they're getting a standing ovation, and they won't tip their cap. Yeah. That was always customary. You always tipped your cap to the crowd when they gave you a standing ovation. Not yep. just walk out yeah. like, yeah, that's right. All, all, great. Bow, all great. bow down yeah. to me. I'm a god. No, the, the ones that crack me up is the ones that'll come out and they'll, they'll pitch five or six innings, and they think that they're great. I remember days that they would they would go and they would pitch to the seventh or eighth inning, you know, and then you had the the reliever come in. They they don't last as long as they nothing's very nothing's very like very Tuesday. rarely do you see somebody go a full game. I know it's unless not, they're 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 uh, flirting with a no hitter or yeah, or, or some kind of record right. thing. They don't want to come out yeah, of the game. But yeah. again, why? Because you're paying uh, eighty million dollars and every pitch he throws is worth right. uh, yeah. fifteen to two thousand yeah. dollars, and you don't want to risk one extra pitch that's going to blow out right. his arm. Right. So it, I, it's it's soured for me, I mean, know, I, I, and I really the, and this season proves it because this is the first Red Sox season we went into the playoffs, and I still didn't know who was playing who for the us. players. Yeah, I didn't know their background. I didn't know where they're yeah. from. I I didn't know anything. I didn't watch hardly any Neither games. Did I. To, yeah. You know, just towards the very end to see if they'd clinch. I put it on for the end of the game and yeah. stuff. But it bores me. But you, yeah. when it comes to the Patriots, yeah. Don't interrupt That's me what, during it's, Patriots. It's a completely different feeling. And and you and I have talked uh, over and over and over again about ways to fix all major league sports. And it's give them a base salary. You get a base salary for your job. You get bonuses for, I don't know, however many touchdowns you make or how many catches you make or how many yards you run or in right, baseball, right. you know, how many home runs you get, whatever. You get bonuses for that. Uh, you, maybe you get a, a, you know, a longevity bonus if you've been there. Next year, you'll make a little bit more, whatever. It's a, you know, it's a tiered thing. But give them all of the promotion they want. Let them let do them all the do- commercials. Let them do spokesperson exactly. or Adidas or exactly. let them do whatever the frick they want. Lend them your logo for your team. Let them do whatever they want. And, and that's it. And you're going to see the prices come down like crazy. Just, just but the players won't do this because well, no, because they, now they because want $30 they, million, no, $300 because, million. No, because then they're going to go back to their the philosophy that started all of this. Oh, well, then that means the owners are going to be stockpiling all the cash, and we're not going to be. That's what started this whole free agency crap, and and this uh, free agency crap spawned these enormous salaries. Because at one time when you were drafted, you were controlled by that team, period, unless they traded you. If they didn't trade you, there was no such thing as free agency. Well, it's just like capitalism in, in the real world, Brady, right? Brady Anderson was the first baseball player to make a million dollars a year. Yeah. They, they, you know, they talk about, you know, in America, capitalism, how it works. And, and there's an uproar right now. Like at Walmart, why should Walmart make all the, all the, they should pay a minimum of $15 an hour. They should pay $20 an hour for their employees. You know what? This is all bullshit. You own the company. You make whatever the freak you want to make. That's the end of it. That's, that's it. You're coming to I'm work sorry. for us and we're going to pay you this I'll pay online. you what I want to pay. If you don't like it, go work somewhere else. Number and unions are are useless, and all of this stuff is is garbage in my opinion. This is a topic for a whole another show, but it's it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. So. But it applies to this show because it this, does. This well, is, that's what I'm saying. It goes both ways with with the players. I understand they're they're you know insisting upon being well compensated, but on the other hand, now they're pigs because right they they're like again back to the sandbox. What? They're going to pay what's his name two hundred and fifty million. I'm better than him. Yeah. I want two hundred and sixty five million, and you can kiss my ass. Right, exactly. And it's not yeah. because they need the extra; they just want right. to be. Known. They want to be number one. They want to have the most. It's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah, I, I, you and I are not going to change it, and it'll probably stay this way for a hundred years. But 
that's all I got to say about it. About football or baseball? Both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck to the Pats this week. I hope you have a defense. It would be nice for a change. Um, I have some in my backyard up against the shed. Some some extra fence? Some extra fence. Yeah. Yeah. Can, <laughs> can you paint a D on it? I got I to gotta tell you this. Have you seen the this commercial? I don't remember what it's for. Um, Where the guys take the front? Yeah, they takes the front fence to go to the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, games, is that what it, okay. And yeah. The wife catches them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Linda looks at that and she goes, "I don't get it." Oh. <laughs> and I say, "D fence." Yes, yeah, she goes, "But where's the D?" She missed the D in the back of the SUV or whatever. She didn't see it, so she just saw this guy taking a fence, and she's trying to figure out what the hell he's doing. Uh, note to Linda, when your husband gets home tonight, smack him across the face for picking on you on the air. Picking, yeah. She doesn't listen to the show. No? No. I wouldn't either. Yeah. She said she doesn't have time for this garbage. She did not. <laughs> you are so abusive to everybody. It's true. It's true. She did not say she, that. She did. You ask her. She did. She did. All right, folks. Uh, we're going to be right back after I snicker my doodle. They use their media to assassinate real news. They use their schools to teach children that their president is another Hitler. They use their movie stars and singers and comedy shows and award shows to repeat their narrative over and over again. And then they use their ex-president to endorse the resistance. All to make them march, make them protest, make them scream racism and sexism and xenophobia and homophobia, to smash windows, burn cars, shut down interstates and airports, bully and terrorize the law abiding. Until the only option left is for the police to do their jobs and stop the madness. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse for their outrage. The only way we stop this, the only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. I'm the National Rifle Association of America, and I'm freedom's safest place. Welcome back. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor or advertising on our show, please drop us an email at talkfot at gmail.com or give us a call at 413-612-8037. The moment you've been waiting for is finally here. Yes, true or false headlines is being sponsored by the Ludlow Lions Club. Do you want to help those in need in your neighborhood? Volunteer today by visiting LudlowLions.org or by calling 754-900-ROAR. That's 754-900-ROAR. How this works is I have a headline, and uh, Sonny, you're going to tell me whether it's a real headline or whether I made it up. So is it true or false? Man time travels to warn of aliens. False. That is true. Can't wait to hear this one. (laughs) Police say a central Wyoming man they arrested for public intoxication claimed he had traveled back in time to warn of an alien invasion. Casper, not the ghost, but police say the man they encountered at 10.30 p.m. Monday claimed he was from the year 2048. The man told police that he wanted to warn the people of Casper that aliens will arrive next year and that they should leave as soon as possible. He asked to speak to the president of the town about 170 miles of Cheyenne. The man told police he was only able to time travel because aliens filled his body with alcohol. He noted that he was... (laughs) He was supposed to be transported to the year 2018, not this year. <laughs> okay. All right. Woman receives 20,000 fake oxycodone pills instead of a yoga mat. True. That is true. When the mail carrier stopped by a South Carolina woman's home Saturday afternoon, she thought the yoga mat she'd ordered online had arrived. But instead, the Rock Hill resident got a rude surprise. The box was reportedly full of illegal narcotic pills. The 20,000 counterfeit oxycodone tablets worth about $400,000. I didn't think that fake pills would be worth that much, but that's phew. 
There were so many pills stuffed inside the box, they were spilling from the package, the unidentified woman said. The woman called the police, who promptly launched an investigation. Officials said the pills were likely made in Mexico and shipped from California. The drugs were apparently bound for the woman's former address, which is now vacant. Due to a misspelling, the package was flagged by the post office and redirected to the woman's current address. Marvin Brown, the commander of the Drug Enforcement Unit of New York County Sheriff's Office, said traffickers often send illegal drugs to addresses they know will be clear of people so they can pick up the contraband. All right, here's the next one. Golfer arrested for carrying too many balls in his bag. False. That is false. I made that up. Yeah. Yeah. You get this thing about balls and bags or something. I don't know. Sacks. And, I don't know what it is with you. Uh, Walmart advertises guns as back to school items. Oh, that has to be true. That is true. Yeah. Walmart has apologized after a photo that showed firearms being marked as back to school items. Why does that not surprise me? I Oh, my God, that place is just... That's a better amusement park than any other place in the world. Insides, one of its stores went viral online, drawing shock and outrage on social media. Walmart sign read, Own the school year like a hero. And it was positioned directly above a glass gun case that was stocked with rifles. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny because you, you know this shit happens in Walmart. The uh, company publicly apologized on Twitter for the image of the sign on the display, initially saying that they removed it. But confusion over the photo appeared to spread with the company's management team, with Walmart first identifying a store in Indiana as the source of the photograph display. Later, they confirmed they are still trying to find the store. We are actively trying to find the correct store where this happened, Walmart spokesman Charles Croson said Thursday morning. We can confirm this was not Evansville, Indiana. We've examined photographs and video inside the store. In an emailed statement, the store condemned the image, stating, quote, what's seen in the photograph would never be acceptable in our stores. We regret the situation and are looking into how it ever could have happened, end quote. Well, here's what happened, okay? <laughs> right now, I don't know if you've been watching, you, you don't watch very many commercials, but they've been pushing, especially the, the department stores like Target and Walmart, uh, these Batman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, yeah. all these back-to-school clothings. And I'll bet that was a displaced thing that somebody had above, you know, go back to school as yeah. a superhero or, back, yeah. or whatever you said. And some asshole must Moved have taken the yeah. sign, must have placed it up there, took a shot of it on his camera yeah. and walked out. I mean, these are things yeah, now that these, these stores can't. I mean, there's things you can't govern. People got some sick sense of humor and they're going to do stupid shit. But I laugh only because it's Walmart. It's Walmart, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's amazing what happens at Walmart. It's just incredible. All right, is your pool looking like your future? A little murky? Then let no worries for you. Professional pool service. Handle all your pool needs. Serving Orange, Osceola, and Polk counties in Florida. Clear your mind by clearing your pool. Give them a call today at 407-953-7926. All right, once again, we have changed... <laughs> Hollywood sound bites. You came up with a solution. Yes. So we've we've concluded that the embarrassing photos uh, didn't catch on with the audience very well. It wasn't going very well. So we've decided to include you folks, the audience, into this as well. So here's what's going to happen: is same thing's going to happen. Sonny and I are going to uh, volley uh, 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 movie quotes back and forth to each other, and every week we will compete. And at the end of the the month, whoever has the most wins. We'll have to take the other one out to lunch. And here's where you come involved. We'll take one of you out to lunch as well. So the loser has to buy lunch for the winner and has to buy lunch for a lucky audience winner. And also, we'll do a tabulation for the end of the year. And at the end of the year, the loser has to buy the winner dinner and also has to buy a lucky audience winner dinner as well. So you can go to our website, fountainofthought.com, for further details and to register. That sounds like a plan. Sonny, you go first. Want to tell our audience our uh, category? 80s sci-fi. Wow, we went from 60s, 60s to 70s, 70s to 80s. 80s. Is there something wrong with the way I'm talking? Because it seems every time I talk, you, you hear come, an echo. There's a magnet, an echo? a magnetic voice keeps getting connected to mine. It sounds much better than yours. Oh, Really? Do you really? think so? Yes. I'm you know, going to tell you right we, now. How about we have a contest radio. one day? 
We'll have a contest one day and have them judge yes. who has the best disc jockey voice. Not to change the subject entirely, but uh, at my Lions Club meeting a uh, Wednesday night, we had a a woman there from the Perkins School for the for the Blind, and she is blind and deaf. And she was there. She was sitting at our table. We had a pleasant conversation. But later on, she got up. She was giving a, a talk about what it was like. And when I started talking, she went up to the speaker and she held the speaker. And she said, keep talking. I like the sound of your voice. She couldn't hear me, but she could hear the you That's know, the amazing. Yeah, so that was, that was kind of cool. It's amazing. And God bless her. Yeah. I, I couldn't even imagine trying to go through life oh, that would be, blind and deaf. I don't know how... I, how do you keep your sanity? The only, I, I know this sounds awful, but the only thing that I would hope for is that I would have been born that way, so I wouldn't well, know would any difference. difference. But I, if I it happened in a tragic accident, or something, oh god, I, I don't know if I could handle that. I really don't. I, 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 I honestly don't. I couldn't. I, I couldn't. Know. All right, so uh, you're up first for '80s trivia. Okay, here's your first clue. You see your death. My blade will finish you. A uh, clue, please. Oh. God, uh, clue. Um, you know the object is that the audience can play along with this. So if you're picking obscure movies that no one has ever heard of, it kind of takes all the fun out of it. Let's go with Crawl. I don't need a clue. Skip the clue. Crawl. You should have gone with the clue. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Dune. 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 That's not an obscure movie. I yeah. Okay. Now apologize. I'm sorry. Replicants are like any other machine. They're either a benefit or a hazard. If they're a benefit. It's not my problem. Blade Runner. Which one? First one. Yeah, the um, second one is not doing so well. All right, so there is a one for you and none for me. Here's your second. Good learn from this guy, guy. He's a goddamn one-man slaughterhouse. That's what he is. Oh, God, I know this, too. Give me a clue, please. It's sci-fi 80s. Do, that we yeah go away give me another clue <laughs> oh crap um uh, bounty hunters i can see this scene too um damn it uh, i'm going to pass blade runner <laughs> oh yeah you're right all right, next. This is a stick-up! Anybody moves and the dead mate! <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? I have no clue whatsoever. All my clues are gone. I can't pass, so I don't know. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I hadn't seen that movie in eons. All right, here is the next one for you. Are you delirious? You know how long it took to invent the games, to merchandise them, to get them into the stores by Christmas? Last Starfighter. Yeah, you knew that all along. You're just milking it. Yeah. <laughs> I went easy on you. You're always going easy on me. Yeah. All right. My last one, please. You touch me, he dies. If you're not in the air in 30 seconds, he dies. If you come back in, he dies. Blade Runner. <laughs> what was it? Escape from New York. Oh. All right. Here is your third one. Tell this to the workers when they ask where your leader went. We, the soldiers of the National Liberation Front of America, in the name of the workers and all the oppressed of this imperialist country, have struck a fatal blow to the racist police state. That wasn't very loud, but you got it. I need a clue. Clue. Uh, the main character is named after an animal. What's the score? Uh, I have two. Uh, I have zero points. You have two. I'll take the X. You'll take the X. Escape from New York. That was? No yes. shit. Yes. All right. So, two to zip for this week, big guy. All right. It's time to dig deep. That only means one thing. It's time for questions from my side. 
All right. This is being sponsored by Mr. Bill's Boot and Shoe Repair in Pantego, Texas. Tell Mr. Bill you heard this ad and receive a 20% discount on any repair. Find them online at mrbills.net. Well, they'll save your soul and gladly, gladly die, die for, for you. you. All right. How this works is you, the audience, send us your questions. It can be anything and everything, just like our podcast. Each week, we pull out three questions to answer them live on the air. And the first question is... Uh, okay, it's a riddle. What room has no windows or doors? Closets. Closet is not a room, but you are actually wearing it. Have you seen some of the damn closets, especially out in the Bel Airs? It doesn't matter. It's not counted as a room. Who said? Um, Every town, everywhere. Closet is not a room. What's on your shirt? A mushroom. There you go. Mushroom. Uh. <laughs> Whoever sent that in, you're a dumbass. All right. Uh, next question is, uh, have you ever met anyone famous? Have you? Lots of people. Me too. Who have you met? Well, I'm not going to brag all day. Oh, I'm going to brag. Okay. Well, you go ahead first. I'll, I'll brag. So, um, depends on what you mean, meet. Well, first of all, what, I, I'm gonna, I, I don't care how the question is written. It doesn't. It, you can't be at a convention or. All right. Well, then I'll leave out Shatner and Nimoy yeah, and Doing yeah, yeah, and. All, yeah, because okay. I can name all that too. This has got to be somebody you walked up to by accident and. Met. Okay. All right. Then my I'll go by according to time. My very first one was, uh, Linda and I on our honeymoon in um, a Disney. We met White Snake. They were in line right behind us. No shit. Yeah, the band, all of them. They were all there right no behind kidding. us, standing in line like regular folk, right behind us. Yeah. Who's White the Snake. lead singer? I don't remember. I Come don't know. on, I don't know. David Coverdale. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was the very first celebrity that I actually ever met. Uh, next was Brooke Shields. You met Brooke Shields in Florida at a flea market. I've known you all this time and told you I used to have a crush on her, and you never told me you met her. I don't know. I don't remember not telling you. Or... You selfish person. <laughs> It wasn't that big of a deal. But yeah, Brooke Shields at a flea market. Was she nice? Yeah, she was very nice. I didn't think that it was her at first because no one was going. She, she had no like entourage and there was nobody going up to her. And, you know, I was with Linda was with me and my aunt was with me. And I'm going, that looks like. No, it's not Brooke Shields. And then we went up and yeah, it was her. So she was very nice. Shook her hand, said hi. You know, she didn't want to bother you. Yeah. You know. uh, next was John Travolta. You met John Travolta. Yes. This you never said, told me I this I told either. you this story. Oh, bullshit. No, when he was in uh, town for making his movie. Oh, I'm sorry. Action. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He was at Apollo's having lunch. Uh, yeah. At Apollo's? Yeah. No. That's that's where he was eating lunch, at Apollo's. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What a weird place to go have lunch. Yeah. Well, not, I mean, not a weird place, but I mean, for for a celebrity, you would think. But, no, but just you're in an area, you figure you'd, you'd want to pick out a... You know, a restaurant in that area that's, you know, specialty to some kind of food or something. I mean, it's Palmer. There is no specialty to some kind of food. Well, you got steamers over there. But, and... that, but uh, that wasn't there when he was there. Oh, this. Oh, that's right. That was back in the That 90s. restaurant wasn't there. Yeah, this was a long time. I still had the Cobbish Corner. That was eons ago. But you still had Pinocchio's. and Nope, that wasn't there either. Really? No, those nope. restaurants weren't around then. Huh. No. Nope. Yeah. So he went to Apollo's. It was very, again, very nice. Um very, very nice. Well, I've heard that many times. Yep. He's, he's, he's very down to earth. Uh, and then the last two are Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You met him? Yes. And Mark Wahlberg. Oh, Mark, I could care less about yes. well, it. I met them both at a, um, uh, a movie convention, a cinema convention. We had, um, it, it was it, in fact, it was um, at um, Gillette Stadium. Okay, well, that doesn't count. I told you. No, this was count. different. Because no, we, no, because no. you got invited to something, you had no. to go to something. It wasn't a random meeting, but. Anyway, we, tell your story. Well, no, they 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 brought him in as guests, and we. And in fact, I sat right next to The Rock. I literally sat next to him during a presentation of movies. He's, we get to see all the upcoming movies. He's huge, isn't he? Yeah, he's big. He's a big guy. Yeah. Um, so is Wahlberg, actually short, but he's pretty beefy. Well, he's always been. Yeah. Um, but and, I, and I'm sorry, Marky Mark. I I didn't mean it to sound. Did I dislike you? It, it's just The Rock. I don't know. He's yeah. just. I like. I like yeah. his style. Um, but again. Um, both of them were very nice, very soft spoken, um, very nice. Had no, you know, just regular folk. Dwayne um, uh, Tyrese, um, can't remember his last name. It's in the, the Fast and the Furious. Yeah. yeah. Well, apparently, um, The Rock has uh, signed a picture deal right now to do a spinoff from uh, Fast and the Furious, yeah. 
which is going to push back the next Fast and the Furious to another year. And Tyrese, what's his name? It's yeah. co-star in the Golden, is it? Oh, he was wanna... all an uproar. And they, had, they, they had him, they had him on the interview, and he's you know saying all this stuff about you know how selfish the Rock is, blah blah blah. <laughs> so they said yeah. well, Rock didn't officially come out, but he did post this on Instagram, I think it was. Yeah, and uh, didn't mention any names, but he was working out, and he's on this thing, and he's doing these, and he just stands there where you just put your hands on Lips. the on the yeah. rails, and you just lift. Yeah. But he's got this chain on him and you have to see the size of this thing around his neck that he's doing the thing right and he looks at the camera and he says well here's the story big dogs have to work and eat little crying puppies stay on the porch <laughs> and I started laughing and I said and you know why that came out that's his years in the WWE yeah. because you know, that, you just don't mess with The Rock. No, you no. don't say things no. to The Rock. He's, no. he's, like he's, another one like Terry Crews. You don't know. I wouldn't no. want to go up and grab him. Come no. on, these these are yeah. guys you just yeah. don't mess with. I mean, yeah. they're they're you know they they know their shit. They know their comedy. They know what to come back with. They're always going to make you look like an ass. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would love to have met The Rock. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. nice. I, again, all could be personas, but everyone that I've met was all very very nice. So. You, well, you met some good ones. I, I take it back. How about you? Well, I met some. I met some celebrities, but nothing to that magnitude. Um, I think I mentioned this a few shows back, but um, my parents took me to uh, Edgar Island, uh, Martha's Vineyard, mm-hmm. to see where Jaws was made. Yeah, because I was fascinated with the movie as a kid. And on the way back, I happened to notice Butch Hobson, the third baseman from the Red Sox. Yeah who is now manager of the Red Sox, oh. he was sitting on the boat, and I just walked over. I said, hi, Mr. Hobson. He said, yes. I said, can I have your autograph? And he gave me his autograph, and he said, sit down. And I started talking with him. He let me, and my father came over after 10 minutes and said, you know, excuse Pull me. You away, is, you're you're it, monopolizing him? No, but he said, yeah. no, no, he can stay. He let me sit with him for the entire trip back from Martha's Vineyard. Really? All the way back and let me tell him all my ideas of how, what the Red Sox should do mm-hmm. and, you know, different moves they should make and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I thought that was very, very nice. I mean, he was very, very, very nice to me. Uh, um, I wasn't thinking about sports people, but Jerry Remy. You met Jerry? Jerry, yeah, Jerry Remy, remember, did my answering machine message for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Dennis and Linda are not home right now, but yeah. Oh, that's cool. I had, I had Rem Dog do my answering machine message. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Hi, this is Jerry Remy. Red Sox fans call me the Rem Dog. Dennis and Linda, two of the biggest fans I know, are not available. If you leave your name, telephone number, and a brief message, they'll return your call as soon as possible. Well, as you can see, I have no life because now I'm taking phone messages. Leave your message after the bark. I mean the beat. And then the other one was by, I went to, uh, who the hell was I going to? I had to go to Logan for somebody to pick somebody up. And you know how me about driving and traveling. And I took my girlfriend with me and I was pissed off because I didn't really want to be there. And I'm walking from the gate and some guy had his guitar case sticking out too far. And I tripped over and almost fell on my face. I said, who the fuck left this in the middle of the goddamn aisle and my girlfriend starts to smack me and she goes shut up i'm like why she goes that's nino beckencourt i said who the hell is nino beckencourt i don't even know who that is to her and she goes he's the guitar player from extreme oh and i guess they're the ones that did more than words more than Yeah, that's the only song that I know from them. Yeah, well, that's yeah. me too. And I'm like, okay. And then, and then she went over and she says, "Oh, hi." And she started talking to him. He was he was a little off, but the lead singer was sitting across from him. And as she was talking to Nino, I started talking to the lead singer and I say, "Yeah, how's it going, guys?" He goes, "Ugh." He goes, "We're heading out to Canada." I said, "What's the matter?" He goes, "Well, we got to do a tour with Brian Adams and blah blah blah." And this is when I still had August Moon. Mm. I said, that's awful. I said, I can't believe that's happening to you. I said, you know what? Why don't you go to the Wolf's Den tonight yeah. and take <laughs> and our gig, go. and I'll be more than happy to take August Moon up and open for Brian Adams, and he started laughing, but he was pretty cool. There was there was a couple of other people I can't remember offhand right well, You now. met Stained, didn't you? Or was that yes, just John? No, well, no. I met Stained before they were Stained. Yeah. I, I worked with each one of them yeah. by accident. I worked with the drummer on an open jam. I worked with the lead singer. I mean... But that was long before the, the, you know they all got together. Yep. Those are the two that you know were the, the most real, you know, just accidental, right. Right. you know, meet them 
and get to talk about it. So, yeah. yeah, it was fun. All right. That was a good question. Thanks for sending that one in. That was really good. All right. Last question is, uh, what was your first job delivering the Palmer Journal? Really? You were a paper boy? Yeah, that was my very first job. I lo- loved that job. Um, didn't take a whole lot. Um, and I got to go to uh, Dominic's when Dominic actually owned Dominic's restaurant. Oh, and that and was I, good back then. And I delivered the paper, and he always would have a donut and uh, hot chocolate for me. So oh, I that's cool. Donut and hot chocolate. Loved, loved it. Yeah. That was my very first paying job. Mine was Big Y. Big Y. Were you a bagger? Stock boy? Um, I, was, I started off as a bagger, and believe it or not, I was the very first, to my knowledge to this day, I was the very first one to be promoted to a cashier. Yeah. Um, because they were they were hesitant to put me as a stock boy because I was so small. Remember, I told you yeah. going through school yeah. at sixteen, I, my growth yeah. was stunt. I was only like five two, and you know they, they were a little. And you've ap- made up for it now. And then what nine? It was ninety, probably ninety two pounds, and they were a little hesitant about me, you know, climbing shelves and doing that. So it, it was, but the person who ran the front end thought just making me a bag boy was just a waste of you know that I should potential. Potential to do yeah. something else, so they yeah. made me into a cashier. Back in the day, prior to the scanners, the but beep, beep, I, when you actually oh, had no, to punch no. you had, in. No, and not only had you to punch <laughs> it in, you had you had you know the way it's set up on a, on a, a calculator, Cash. yeah, and the middle one had a little little tito, yeah, on it, and you had to put your middle finger on that, and you weren't allowed to look at the right. register. You were supposed right. to, just, yeah. And I look at these kids today, and I'm like, you have yeah. no idea. <laughs> I know the I know. stress. I know. I had to go through. Yep. And then if somebody came through with a pile of coupons, they yep. could lock your register down on yeah. you. You had to get a yeah. – it was a – I mean, that was a job back then. Cashier yeah. wasn't what – and you say somebody, oh, my cashier, oh, yeah. big deal. No, back then, your yeah. ass was on the yeah. line for every penny, and you had to pay attention all yeah. the time. But, yeah. you know, it was fun. Right. Those are some good questions. Thanks, guys. Uh, don't forget no, to send no, those in. Two of the questions were good. The first one – Yeah, the first one was kind of was a throwaway, moronic. But, yeah, but, uh, but like it them. is weird that you <laughs> – the answer was mushroom, but I wore it. Yeah, mushroom. you wore a mushroom. Yeah. What does yeah. it say? His his uh, shirt has a picture of a mushroom on it, and it says, I'm a fun guy. Get it? <laughs> fun guy. Yeah. All right, so keep those uh, questions coming in. Uh, you can send them to Twitter. You can send them to Facebook. Or you can visit our website, Fountain of Thought, uh, email, however you like. Just get them to us. Looking for a little-known but great movie to watch this weekend? Then you're listening to the right podcast. Here's an awesome movie recommendation. All right, this is being sponsored by the Young Men's Library Association and the Ware Public Library. Find books, magazines, newspapers, and so much more. Visit their website at warelibrary.org. All right, uh, so I do have one this week. Uh, stumbled upon this, never heard of it, and I have, again, this is why we do the movie recommendation, no idea why this didn't become mainstream and didn't catch on because it's a fantastic, funny movie and has an all-star cast. Absolutely Anything. Have you ever heard of that one? Never heard of it. Absolutely Anything came out 2015. It's a sci-fi comedy. It stars Simon Pegg, Robin Williams, Kate Beckinsale, Terry Jones, John Cleese, Terry Gilliam. You know who those guys are, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Rob Riggle. So it's its an all-star cast. 2015? Yeah, 2015. And it's called Absolutely Anything. What happens is there's these intergalactic uh, aliens that are out in space. And apparently they go around the universe deciding whether certain races should live or die. And they test them. And if they pass the test, they live. If they don't pass the test, they just annihilate. It's a comedy. They annihilate the whole race. And that's where the, the Monty Python people are. The Monty Python guys are all the aliens. Well, now we've come upon Earth, and they go through this Rolodex of every human that's in existence. And they flip the Rolodex, and it, it you see a couple of movie stars go by, and it lands on the character of Simon Pegg. So they give him the ultimate power to do anything he wants. Anything he wishes can come true by the wave of his hand. All he has to do is wave his hand. Now, this movie is so freaking hysterical because it takes everything literal. Well, don't give it all I'm not going to give it all away. I'll give you one thing and you'll understand what happens. Some people die in it. He says, I wish everyone that died was alive again because it takes him literally every single person that ever died now comes back to life. 
Oh my God! Talk about a it's, planet overload. It's so it's hysterically funny. So I, I don't know how I missed this. I never heard of this. Especially I didn't either. I, mean, I feel bad. Me being in the in the movie industry, I I, I was I, I'd never we, even heard of. this. We've had this talk before. There's so many films that have been flying under the radar because. There's just too much coming out and not enough support in movie theaters anymore. Yeah, they, that it, it just you know it, so it, it goes by you. This this movie certainly it's a movie theater uh, ready. I mean it's that good. It's not like a low quality. So I recommend it. So absolutely anything. And another quick one I want to mention is um, Odd Thomas. With I um, saw that Anton Yelchin. That was in the theaters. Yeah. Uh, it was, but it didn't. It, it didn't, it didn't get, do very it, well. It, but, well, it didn't do any very well because it didn't get enough exposure. And again, it has a weird name, so yeah. people didn't. Yeah. Then connect it to yeah. we had that what it theater. is, but yeah. it basically it runs upon the same premise as Sixth Sense, where a guy can see dead people, and I'll just leave it at that. But it's a fun movie, you know. If you want to watch yep. with a family or something, you can watch it. It's not going to uh, you know scare the living hell or give you gore and all the rest of that stuff, but it'll, it'll keep you in the Halloween spirit. All right, Sonny's pet peeve of the week. I've been meaning to bring this up week after week after week, and I'd always forget to write it down. And then after the show is done, I'd say, oh, I wanted to talk about that. Why are there so many stupid, unnecessary buttons on a TV remote control? And I'm not talking about a Comcast or a Direct TV remote. I'm talking about when you buy your TV, you got this remote, and it's got all these idiotic buttons that... Does anybody ever use all those? Well, I'm, so, I'm sure a God does. But for the layman purpose, is it necessary? Some of these, I don't know what the hell they're for. Little squiggly lines. and What does it mean? I use all the buttons. Uh, well, I knew you were going to say that. You know why I knew he was going to say that? I have it all in one remote, and because I use all my buttons. An, yeah, you were always using all your buttons, and you got everything on, <laughs> and I got all, and it's all in here, and I got it all together, and it's all one big package. And one then remote. Well, guess what? Yeah. Yeah. This is my pet peeve. Okay? <laughs> okay. I like things just a little Simple. bit simpler. Simple. Okay? And if you have to break it down to two remotes, or or make the remote two halves. Put the top half with the important parts. A flip remote. Volume, channel, blah, blah, blah. All the yeah. necessary stuff. Anything you need to program the TV, mm. put on the lower section. Mm -hmm. Don't mix it all together so you're always going, what the frig? And then somebody comes in your house and tries to turn your TV on because you're not home. And then they screw the whole thing up and it takes you 20 minutes to try to figure out how the hell to get it back to where it was before. That's it. Pet peeve of the week. Too and many buttons. Any final thoughts? Yes. Back to uh, the NFL. Yes. Because that's where we started. Yes. It's time for haircuts, especially in the NFL. I'm tired of watching football and watching these guys with these hair so damn long. Can't even read I can't their read their name. I don't know who the hell's carrying the ball. You can't see their face because they're wearing a helmet. Okay. There's one team, and I can't stand, I can't believe I'm about to say this. There's one team of professional sports that still to this day has the same rule. That is the New York Yankees. You will keep your hair shortcut. You are only allowed a mustache if you want facial hair. Other than that, it's supposed to be a team-oriented sport. That's why we wear uniforms. You're supposed to be a team. Get it? Uniforms. Everybody looks alike. You're not supposed to walk around looking like a freak show. You don't need to look like Tina Turner underneath a football, a football helmet running down the field with a ball when nobody knows who the hell you are anyway because nobody can read your number or your damn fucking name. You send them over to the Army base. <laughs> Crew cuts for everybody. Crew cuts for everyone. And then when it grows back, maybe you'll learn your lesson. Yeah. Like, That's uh, it. That reminds me of uh, Stripes when uh, John Candy came out of getting his hair cut and he had it in his hand and he's just so upset they cut it, his hair. Well, that was so stupid because I was in the military. You, you don't yeah. come out with – because Harold Ramis and Bill Murray yeah. come out with these, these well-trimmed haircuts. Yeah. That never – everybody yeah. gets buzz shaved. You paid him a couple extra bucks to keep his hair. Yeah, right. Yeah. It never happens. Yeah. That was such bullshit. But, hey, that's the movies. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this show, folks. Uh, leave us your opinion or your thoughts on our listener line at 413-612-8037. Still waiting for Peyton Manning to call in. And don't forget to look for our other uh, podcast, Dissecting Discovery. Reminding everyone to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fountain of thought. 
Follow us on Twitter at TalkFOT, and don't forget to visit our website at FountainOfThought.com for past and future episodes. And one more thing. Uh, prior to Halloween, I'm going to hold a contest. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a trivia question. It's going to be worth a $30 gift card, and uh, how it'll work is you'll call into our hotline, and the first call that has the answer I'm looking for, and it's time-stamped, the first one, will win the card. So that's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. All right. Sounds good. And remember, everyone, be, be a, a fountain, fountain, not, not a, a drain. <laughs> If I play through? Doctor? Doctor? <laughs> Glad I'm not sick. Run, Forrest, run! Titmouse. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. <laughs> you thought I was gonna say as big a son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> that was stupid. Oh, groovy, baby. That was easy.